Hello and welcome back to Menu Docs. My name is Vex and I'm back at it again with episode 5 of the Python Hue web dashboard series. Now, in today's video, we're going to be getting to the fun stuff. Well, in my opinion, I reckon it's pretty fun because we're actually going to be connecting our backend to the front end using the API we created last episode. Now, last episode, I feel like I probably could have done a better job at explaining what an API is, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. Anyway, APIs. An application programming interface, an API, is a computing interface that defines the interactions between multiple software intermediaries. It might be confusing to understand from just that sentence alone, but here's a dumbed down explanation of pretty much what an API is. So let's say you're sitting at a restaurant and this is you, you're mentally preparing your order. Now you need to get your order to the chef somehow. This is where an API comes in. So you tell the waitress, the API, your order, which is the request. So you're sending your request to the API. Now the waitress tells the chef, the system, your request. And now that the system has your request, it starts processing everything it needs to do to spit out a response. And in this case, the chef cooks your meal, which is the response. And it is then handed back to the API, which is then delivered to you. Right. Now that you know pretty much how an API works with a very dumbed down version explanation. Let's get started with our coding. So let's open up our terminal. Terminal, sorry, I mean text editor. And let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to edit our main.py file. We're going to remove content. And we're going to check if the user is logged in. So we can go here and type not equal to and what's happened to my keyboard. There we go. And then we can just do return. Oops. Return. I cannot spell today. Redirect. And we're going to need to import redirect in a second, but we're going to redirect them to forward slash or we can just import redirect at the top. So if they're not logged in, we're just going to redirect them to off and underneath here. If they are logged in, we can remove content because we're not going to be passing anything through. And that is all honky dory. That's all fixed. So now let's get started into our JavaScript file. So if we go to our static JS and then create a new file, I'm just going to call it lights.js. Inside of here, I'm going to define a function and I'm going to use some of the new syntax and I'm going to call it change underscore color. And I'm going to make it asynchronous and just pass an arrow function. And now that we've done that, we need to actually grab a couple of elements. So we can get our elements by doing let light equal document dot get element by ID and we can just pass in light let hue so now we need to get our color that we're going to change the light to document dot get element by id we can do the same at the top and in here we can just pass in hue we got to actually send our response to the APIs now. So imagine, you know, where the person sitting in the restaurant and we got to prepare our order. So to tell, you know, the waitress as the example, or we'll continuing on the example from before, we can do let response. So we're going to prepare our, like, we're going to prepare the incoming response anyway. So we're going to go let response equal await. And we had to create this function asynchronous so we can, you know, use the await. I'm going to go fetch. And inside of here, I'm going to put in some bat ticks forward slash API forward slash Q forward slash then we use the dollar sign in the curly braces and we're going to put in light dot value and then we're going to do the same thing pretty much again but except in this you know parameter we're going to put in Q dot value oh, I'm having a hard time typing this now that we've done that, we need to actually pass what type of uh, method we want to send, and we're going to be sending a meth, uh, post method. So a post method is generally used for 
response uh, requests that have data that you're going to be reading or you know storing you know files images or data to a database or something as an example um we're not actually sending any data in the body so it doesn't you know it might make sense of why we're using a post but i'm using post because if you look at the phillips you uh, API documentation, they actually used post for changing the color of their light bulbs. So later on in the future, just in case we want to change our API instead of using PQ and just create our own, it's pretty much like set up. You just got to do the other little bits to change it. That's all we need to send for that. And now we can just do let uh, data equal we need to await this too, await response because it's a promise. Dot JSON. So this is gonna get the response of this, convert it to a JSON for us. You can use the dot then if you want to, uh, but it's really just down to you. And then I'm just gonna go let then data dot error. And if there is no error or if it's false, we can just type in. Uh, whoops, I did not meant to put let there. My bad. I meant to put if. If return, and we're just going to create an alert. We can create a nice div something, you know, a div class that can be added. Oops, what am I typing? Done. And we can just put semicolon at the end. That's pretty much it for our JavaScript file. So again, this line uh, in our response, like a response that would look like this is um, error, false, output. There would be an output here if we wanted to pass one in the api but there is none so we're just checking to make sure this is false and if there is an error you know we could access the output field and see what the error was sweet so let's go to our index.html file we're gonna have to change some stuff in here uh first of all we can remove this content we don't need that anymore I'm just going to create a div and inside of this div, I'm just going to create two input fields so we can get, you know, the user input. Um, we're going to give it an inline style. And in this inline style, I'm just going to have margin dash bottom. And I'm going to give it five pixels. You can give it whatever you want. I'm going to make mine five because I reckon that's you know, good enough what we do, for what we, for what we need now. I'm not worrying about cross compatibility, like between the sizes of a phone compared to a computer. If you want to do that, have fun. <laughs> I, I personally really dislike that side of the front end. Uh, in the type, we're going to put in text because well, it's a text. So I'm going to put, and the name's going to be light and that's going to be the I suppose like it's like a form ID kind of thing for that import field. And in the placeholder, I'm just going to light name and closing arrow. And I'm going to do a break here because I'm going to do a new line afterwards. And I'm pretty much going to do the same thing at the top. I'm just going to go input and we can pass some stuff in here like style, margin, it's not appearing bottom and I'm just going to do five pixels again side here I'm going to do ID and I'm going to give it the hue ID oops that needs to go there there we go it's all fixed and the same thing I'm just going to go name equal hue placeholder and I'm going to go light color Int I cannot spell tonight and I'm going to create another break tag let's create a new line on our response and I'm going to create a button and inside of this button we need to pass an on click and with the on click we want to call our change underscore color and I'm just going to put it, the text as like update lines this is going to look very ugly we can do some CSS in the next episode where we go through and add all of our API routes um, and make it look really nice because our uh, next episode is going to be pretty big. Now that we've done that, we need to import our JavaScript file. So to import JavaScript files in browser, we can just do the script tag 
and we can access our static JS lights.js and that's what we called it. Sweet, so that will import and let's try it. So if we go back to our terminal, we can tie python3 main.py. Oh boy, what's happening? There we go. All right, I'm gonna quickly flick over to the browser and let's test it. Sweet, so I'm on the browser now. As you can see, it wants me to log in and I believe it's this and then it's that. Ah, sweet, all right, we're in. You can see our things all working. We got our breaks. If we didn't have the break tag, this would have been right smack up against it underneath it. Uh, without the margin so if we didn't have the break tag it would be up here so i just put it there later on we can change it so i'm going to put uh whoop, not table i'm going to put table lamp to tell the one i'm going to change it on my so i'm going to put table lamp in here because i've got one of my lights on my table and it's called table lamp so i'm going to put it in exact spelling because it is case sensitive and in the color field i'm just going to put like 1600 and i think that'd be like a yellowish green color and we can hit update lights and we got an error. So let's do some quick debugging. All right, I found the error. <laughs> um, <laughs> I forgot one character in the URL. We need to have a forward slash here. So just quickly before we move on to the next part, I just realized there's actually a major flaw in this code. If there's going to be an error, it's not going to do anything. And you probably just get a bunch of errors in the console without realizing. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement an uh, error error handler so we can do this by using well this is a promise object here so it's going to either resolve or reject so we can just do it use a dot patch uh well, actually we can use the dot patch in a second so we're going to use dot then and we're going to go res and then arrow function res dot json we can use a not uh, use another dot then and we can do res and then an arrow function and inside of here we can go if res error return oh sorry if no error we can return and we can just alert the user done oh my god i cannot type today and underneath here we can just go else console.log res.output turn and then we can just tell the user that was an error error Please check console. And if that is all sweet, we can use out.catch and we're going to pass error through here. And we're going to check if there's an error. So if error, we're going to do console.log error return alert error. Please check console. We're gonna remove this from down here because this is just gonna be unneeded. It's pretty much just gonna duplicate what is happening up here. So if we go to our browser now, I'm gonna be using incognito because if you use like you don't have to use incognito, but because this is like classified, it's like it thinks you're going to an actual website, it's not like a static file that you're visiting, so it's gonna try and cache like the CSS, the JavaScript, and all that type of stuff. So if you're using Cognito, Chrome's not gonna cache it, so you won't get any weird, I suppose you could call it like a logic error. It's not really a flaw, it's just Chrome trying to help speed up load times to websites. So I went through and cleared my cache and then went into incognito, so it wasn't gonna use any cache. So now if we type in like, you know, don't put in anything and we hit update lights, oh, forgot to start this. You can see the error handle is working. Um, so we can just do Python main.py and the server is running. So if we just reload this, All right, I'm still logged in. So yeah, again, if we don't put anything in, you know, error, please check console. Uh, I can put in like, you know, table lamp, something like that. And I'm going to get an error. And just this is uh, Flask logging de by default an error. So don't worry about it for now. But we can change our lights. I'm going to change it to green. And you can see it worked. So if we actually go to our console in here, you can see, you know, syntax error, unexpected token in JSON at position zero, blah, blah, blah. 
that's it for today's video. Um, I know it wasn't much, but I was more focused on explaining uh, what an API is because I that is something important. You do you do need to understand what an API is and you know how they kind of work. I need to know all the bits and pieces about it, but a very basic understanding is very helpful for this project. Uh, thanks for watching. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, dislike it. Please leave a comment if you didn't like it and tell me why. And I'll try and fix that for the next video. I do read all your comments. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you need help, join our Discord server. There will be a link in the description and I can help you.